joi. Life. Are we just barely alive, or do we live life? Over the last hundred years, we have doubled our life expectancy by eradicating contagious diseases once thought incurable: tuberculosis, meningitis, AIDS. Over the last 50 years, we've managed to diagnose and treat much earlier life-threatening diseases like prostate or colon cancer. And over the last three years, we have triumphed over a global pandemic, saving the lives of billions. Science is at the forefront of many breakthrough advancements for our health and our life. And yet, 75% of us live with obesity and excess weight, despite following all the government advice. Over the last three decades, twice as many people. Are suffering and dying much earlier from lifestyle diseases like cancer, Alzheimer, diabetes, heart disease, and even more alarmingly, one in three of our children—yes, one in three of our children—are living with obesity and excess weight, following us fast towards this path of lifestyle diseases. If we exclude contagious diseases, we're dying at exactly the same rate as one. Hundred years ago, we're obsessed about diet and lifestyle, yet suffering and dying much earlier from lifestyle diseases. Why? And what can we do to prolong our healthy years of life? This is exactly the same question that I faced a few years ago. I was 42 years old. I was feeling tired, low in energy. I decided to do a scan to understand what was happening. Inside my body, I found that I had half a kilo, half a kilo of fat in and around my organs, a concerning amount for my for my future health. I thought I was healthy, but I was blind. I was a toffee, thin outside, fat inside. I thought I was eating all the right and healthy things for me, but in fact, I knew more about the right fuel to put in my car, rather the right, right fuel to put. In my body, I decide to consult my doctor. I ask him, "What shall I do? What shall I be eating to be healthier?" You know what I got? A leaflet. Yes, just a leaflet. A leaflet containing the same generic advice that I was getting from my dear grandmother decades earlier. I vividly remember her telling me, "You're lucky, little George." Do not eat eggs; they're bad for your cholesterol. I was not happy. I started searching for answers for the truth behind this firm, rigid advice of eggs and cholesterol. I was surprised to find that this firm advice was based on just few poorly designed studies. I will give you an example: a study in 1972 with just 12 people. 12 people. The study was so poorly designed. That it didn't account for the fact that six out of the 12 people had high cholesterol levels before the, start, the study started, and also the fact it didn't account for what else these people were eating or drinking. So they could be eating pizza all day long, or bacon, or tons of alcohol. So I thought, could everything that we have been told about food was a lie? A few years, a few miles away from me, Professor Tim Spector was asking exactly the same question. Tim has been studying twins, 15,000 twins over the last 30 years. You see, twins are an amazing group of people to study to understand the difference in the impact of nature versus nurture on our health. Although twins are identical, oftentimes they have diverging paths towards how they develop diseases, how fast they age, or even how they put on weight. Take for example, Jackie and Jillian. Jackie is 20 kilos heavier than Jillian. Tim discovered that although these identical twins share 100 percent of the DNA, 100 percent of the DNA, they only share one third, one third of the gut microbiome. This beautiful, vast community of trillions of bacteria living in our gut, and so influential for the health of our metabolism. 
our immune system, our mood, our overall health. Tim discovered that it was through how twins like Jackie and Jillian ate and lived that explained these big differences in their gut and overall health. And also that the gut could hold the keys to the right lifestyle, the right way for us to eat and live and be healthier. My friend Jonathan Wolf, Tim, and I met and discovered that we all share exactly the same health concerns. I have these gut issues. What is causing them, and what can I do? Jonathan asked. I had a mini stroke. I want to understand what to eat to be healthier. Tim added. It turned out that we were all obsessing about answering the same exact question: What is the right advice for us individually? To be able to prolong our healthy years of life. In searching for answers, we consulted 13 world-leading professors of nutrition around the world. We asked them their view on 105 different foods. We expected that they would agree on most, but we were surprised to find they disagreed on many. For example, in foods like raisins, or yogurt, or even cheese. But I don't want you to get your hopes too high, <laughs> because they all agreed ice cream is actually bad for our health. <laughs> so we asked ourselves, what if, what if, what if we studied the impact of food on our health real time? You see, each time we eat, our blood levels change, our blood sugar levels, our blood fat levels, our insulin levels. These are very important for the health of our metabolism, our gut, our overall health, short, medium, and long term. Let's call these changes in the blood levels, just for simplicity today, responses to food. Our responses to food. The higher and the more frequent these responses to food are, the worse for our health. So now imagine how many times we eat in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year. Over decades, and imagine the compounding effect over decades of high responses for our health. One could imagine that this is analogous to the impact of wear and tear over 30 years on the piping and plumbing system of our house, right? So we decided to do exactly that, to launch the Predict study, a very ambitious study to study the response to food in thousands of individuals, even identical twins. We wanted to study three things. Firstly, we want to study the individual, their DNA, their bacteria in their gut, their health conditions, their health background, their health markers. Secondly, we want to study exactly how these people ate and lived over a period of 14 days. Exactly what they ate, in what in what sequence, in what space, how fast they ate, how they slept, how they exercised, even what antibiotics they took. And thirdly, we want to understand the resulting responses to food: how the blood sugar levels, the blood fat levels, their insulin levels, change after what they ate and how they lived. Scientists, when we first told them about our plan, thought we were absolutely crazy. "You are mad," they said. "These studies only take place on 10 to 20 people. You will never pull it off." And yet, we were determined, and we partnered with some of the most amazing people. In places like Harvard and Stanford, Mass General Hospital, King's College in London, and today, Predict is the largest study of its kind in the world, with 75,000 participants and growing. I vividly remember the first day we saw the results. I was shocked to see that amongst thousands of people, like all of us here, even identical twins. When we gave them the same exact food, they had ten times a tenfold difference in the responses to the same exact food, meaning that the same food is not right for all of us. It also meant that for some of these people, they had a tenfold higher need to take drastic, urgent action for their health right there and then. We were also surprised to see that. Even identical twins had different responses to the same food. Take, for example, Hugo and Ross, the Turner twins. 
this British world adventurers. Hugo had much higher responses to exactly the same food versus Ross. Hugo and Ross are 100% identical, yet with very different responses to the same exact food. We also saw that when we gave the same food to our participants, about 25% of them experienced a large drop in their responses after they ate it, getting them to be hungrier and overeat by an amount of approximately 300 calories. And yet even that effect was highly individual. When we gave foods of exactly the same calories, let's say, for example, oatmeal and almonds, to the same people, we saw that the responses were much different. Can you guess which of these two foods have higher, more unhealthy responses? Well, let me tell you, the healthy oatmeal had higher responses, meaning more unhealthy, although the fatty almonds had more stable responses which means it's more healthy. So in the end, it turns out that maybe a calorie is not a calorie. This is exactly why restrictive calorie counting fails. You see, it's the quality of the food that matters. It's the quality of the calories we consume that determines the amount of calories that we burn. And the effect is highly individual. Let me put it simply, if I ate a food, the higher my responses are, the more my biology fights back, getting me to be hungrier and overeat. The more stable my responses are, the more I get my biology right by my side, needing less calories to consume. So, with PREDICT, we saw that every single one of us is unique. We all have very different gut microbiomes, even identical twins. We all have very different responses to food, in fact, 10 times different, even identical twins. And our lifestyle, the way we eat, the way we live, is completely unique, making the difference in these responses larger and larger. And that is very important for the amount of calories we consume, our hunger levels, our energy levels, our mood, our gut health, our overall health. So we ask ourselves the following question. How can we take this amazing data and insights and turn it into something actionable so that many people, including all of us here, can benefit from? With the help of artificial intelligence, we developed a personalized prediction algorithm so we can help predict for every single person their actual response to food and any lifestyle and its impact on the real-time health so that we can help people like Jackie and Gillian, Hugo, Ross, in fact, everybody here and in the world, to understand the true state of the health and also get a personalized score for any food and lifestyle and the right advice for them to stabilize their responses, improve their gut health and live healthier for longer. I was amongst the first guinea pigs to try out this algorithm and the results were profound. First of all, I felt empowered, I felt liberated for the first time, I could truly understand the actual responses and the impact of food and lifestyle on my health. For the first time, I could make my own decisions, not be told what to do. By following the advice, I dropped my cholesterol levels and my fat levels by 40%. I improved my gut health by 30%. I was not tired anymore. My energy went through the roof. I was not just alive. I was living life again. Now, I want to ask you a question. Please raise your hand if you obsess to try and find that perfect size of shoes and clothes, right? You, you have all wear the same size shoe, right? Please raise your hand, right? Come on, don't be shy. All right, if we all obsess about finding that perfect size for our clothes and our shoes, let me ask us a question. Why do we accept identical nutrition advice that is wrong and harmful for us? Why do we accept being in the dark about the true state of our health? In 1965, we started inspecting our cars yearly. In 2023, we get an electronic diagnostic for our cars daily and an overnight software upgrade to be able to keep them running healthier for longer. 
In 1965, one in 50 people had type 2 diabetes. In 2023, one in nine people are dying from diabetes. And one in three people have prediabetes, 90% of them not even knowing about it. I believe we deserve better. I believe we, you, have a right to understand how your own body works and make your own decisions day by day so you can look forward to more healthy years of life. I ask us all a question. What would the world look like if all of us could predict the future state of our health and take proactive, personalized action decades before diseases arise? Or to make it a bit larger, what would the world look like if 10 billion people on this planet each gained 10 extra healthy years of life? Well, I can tell you, this is a world with 100 billion extra healthy years of life. 100 billion years of people not just being alive, but people living life. And that is an idea worth sharing, my friends. Thank you.